Warcraft Less Traveled A World of Warcraft time capsule dedicated to the exploration and discovery within WoW. The Whispering Forest A unique level 81 non-elite NPC simply titled the Tears Fall Bear. It's colored with silver and gray tones, and it has similar characteristics to other diseased bears found elsewhere in Azeroth. What makes this Tears Fall Bear interesting is that it's the sole bear of its type found here. It can be seen just outside the southern edge of the Whispering Forest boundary, just into the subzone called Silver Pine Forest. The bear patrols very, very slowly in the mountains here, walking between coordinates 38-7 and 35-5. The area is in the mountains northeast of the Skittering Dark, and you'll need a flying mount to reach her, and quite often, you'll find that the bear is sound asleep, which it tends to do quite often on its long east-to-west patrol here through the mountains and the uninhabited cliffs. This Tears Fall bear is quite aggressive to both factions, so tread gently when you get a chance to visit her. The second curious location to visit is up and through the Whispering Forest into the northern section, here, an unnamed mountain lake can be found. No NPCs exist in or immediately around its shores, but what's found in the lake's center is the reason for our visit. Still subtitled The Whispering Forest, a small rocky island exists at coordinates 1552. Explorers will find the remains of a small fishing camp, although something clearly went terribly wrong. You see, on the edge of the water, the fishermen prepared for a relaxing and secluded experience. There's a wooden fishing chair, a tackle box, a large red and orange umbrella, complete with fishing worm decorations on its interior. There are numerous rotting fish skeletons in the sand, scattered wine bottles, and a jar of nightcrawlers still actively wiggling in the can. Yet, where's the fisherman? Well, he or she can be found here too, but all that remains is its skeleton, impaled by a sword in the sand. The bones appear human, but there's no telling exactly what brought about this poor fisherman's demise. And that's not all that's hidden here in this mountain lake. A final unexplained scene can be discovered southeast of the fishing camp. By diving below the lake's surface on the floor of the lake at coordinates 1754, an airplane of gnomish design has crashed here. It is submerged with a small trickle of air bubbles escaping from its top. On the lake floor, near the wreckage, a small gnome-like skeleton can be seen, assumed to be the unlucky pilot. Similar to the abandoned fishing camp, this scene of the sunken airplane provides another unexplained area of wow that has no questing or lore ties, but simply makes us stop and wonder. But today, I'm proud to take you high into the mountain valley in the northwest corner of Tearsfall Glade Zone, where here exists an extremely interesting and undocumented feature found inside the current world of Azeroth. Not only is this hidden destination and its features something worth discussing on today's Warcraft Less Traveled, but this area also contains a very brief event for those who are lucky and patient enough to see it. Upon witnessing this, I've checked all the prominent WoW information in internet sites, and I've got to tell you, I'm pretty sure that what we're going to talk about today is not covered anywhere else. And I must say first, without the untiring and amazing help from Kristen from Argent Dawn, who also plays Alexia on Netherbane, it became possible to compile the many multiple days of data for this week's project. And it's specifically because of her drive and tenacity that this entirely new and secret event has come to light for me. It's taken a lot of our time to assemble the facts here, and although her voice may not be heard in this episode, my thanks. So, explorers, are you ready to hear about something that is nearly unknown to all WoW players? Well, there's a lot of details to cover today, so let's jump in with both feet. In the zone of the Tears Fall Glade, only accessible with the use of a flying mount, a subzone called the Whispering Forest can be found in the northwest corner of the zone. The world map shows a lake in this area, but to its south, within the mountains, a large grove of trees and pine can be found. Besides the occasional mouse or other critter, the woods are nearly empty, eerily empty. No current quests exist, nor alliance or horde NPCs, and there's no game reason that a traveler would even need to visit here. The in-game music is dark and ominous, just like you would find in Tears Fall proper or Duskwood. A quick flyby of this subzone might cause you to think that it's another piece of filler that exists only to give character to the unfinished areas of WoW. Untrue, however. This forested mountain valley hides something bizarre and magical in its center. 
found at coordinate 17, 67, a large circle of tall white mushrooms can be found growing on the forest floor. This ring of mushrooms, which hints at something elven or more likely fairies, grows taller than the height of a torn or drain eye, and at times glows in a pulsing blue-green radiance. The sight might cause a player to stop and wonder, but can be easily dismissed as another random landscape feature. And most oftentimes, this assessment of this fairy ring of giant mushrooms is correct. Except, if you're fortunate enough to know that if you wait long enough here, a very brief and currently unexplained event happens. Here in the Whispering Woods, many hours will go by without any activity. Then suddenly, outside of the fairy mushroom ring, a colorful small dragon will materialize. This fairy dragon NPC is called a Fey Drunk Darter. It spawns as a regular level 80 to 84 NPC and is friendly to both factions. This winged Fey Dragon flies in small patterns around the outside of the circle of mushrooms, but never flies into its center. Within a few minutes, a second Fey Dragon will spawn outside the circle. The mushrooms here will glow in a green light, and wispy gray smoke can be seen high above the mushroom circle. Soon, more Fey Drunk Darters appear, a total of seven in all. Kristen and I could find an approximate spawn timer pattern for each, finding each new Fey Dragon appears anywhere from 2 to 15 minutes since the appearance of the previous one. Once all seven appear, which on average takes about 40 minutes, the pattern they form is also a circle that encompasses the outside ring of the mushrooms. Targeting a Fey Dragon is possible, but they provide no further interaction. After all the dragons appear, they quietly and mysteriously fly near the mushroom ring, keeping their circular pattern. This mysterious scene continues undisturbed and unchanging for the next couple hours. Throughout this time, explorers of less traveled Azeroth will notice small groups of level 80 to 84 Tearsfall deer that appear far off, but within sight of the mushroom ring and fey dragons. These deer, titled Tearsfall Stag, Doe, and Fawn, all appear at the same time, each with ghostly green eyes, looking undead or some would say plagued or enchanted. They walk the forest, almost as if sensing that something is about to happen. And sure enough, it does. Approximately two to three hours from the appearance of the very first Fey Drunk Darter Dragon, a completely mysterious event occurs at the Ring of Mushrooms. It all starts with each Fey Dragon halting its movement, each lining up symmetrically in the circle around the outside of Mushrooms, facing inside towards the middle. Suddenly, each dragon projects a wavy beam of yellow-colored light into the center of the ring. Here, in the middle of the mushroom ring, a glowing portal materializes. It can be targeted as an NPC, showing as friendly to both factions, and is titled the Fairy Circle. The beams of light flow from the seven fey dragons into this fairy circle, and you'll notice that the various enchanted forest deer slowly approach the outside ring of the dragons and watch quietly. As this fairy circle event unfolds, you'll notice that the in-game music also changes to something I have never heard anywhere else in Azeroth. It sounds uplifting and magical, a stark contrast to the eerie droning sounds that are typical for this area. In addition, as the music plays and the beams of light travel from the dragons into the fairy circle, golden musical notes appear above the fey dragon's heads, as if they themselves are singing the song. This is all quite a sight to witness. Plus, it also ends almost as quickly as it starts. In a matter of three minutes, the fairy circle event ends. The fey dragon and Tearsfall deer turn around and move towards the forest, slowly vanishing from sight. Although the mushroom ring has existed since Cataclysm, it's quite clear that the fey dragon and fairy circle event are very new to Azeroth. From what I've been able to research, I believe both have been introduced in either patch 4.1 or possibly the event in 4.2. It is unclear to me if this is one of those random events like the Goldshire Children that we discussed on the show, or if this is something that will gain actual game relevance as Cataclysm unfolds further. And I think it is no wonder that no one in WoW has seemed to really take notice of this strange event, because in a matter of moments, it appears and vanishes. Very easy to miss. And I do encourage everyone to take the time and patience to witness this fairy circle event for yourself and share your thoughts and speculation at what it might mean. Next week, we'll take a look at some more unusual features found in the Whispering Forest and discuss the possible reasons for this existence of the fairy circle ring and the Fey Dragon's mysterious musical event. 
please send all your show comments and questions to warcraftlesstraveled at gmail.com or listen back to the show archives or subscribe to the show at warcraftlesstraveled.com. My name is Skolnik. Until next time, remember to travel safe, always invite fairy dragons to karaoke, and leave only footprints. <laughs>